and welcome back to Happy and Healthy. My name is Janina Mopola, and this is your first time listening to my podcast. Um, we post these every single Tuesday, and I'm your host, Janina Mopola. So I have this podcast in hopes to better people mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally. And sometimes we have one-off topics that are just kind of fun and random. And we and I I keep saying we, but it's really me. I'm the host. I interview people and. This podcast has just grown so much. Um, I've been doing this for over two years now, and we also have merch. So if you guys want to check that out, it is uh, just JaninaAmapola.com. That'll be in the show notes or the it's on um, YouTube as well, linked down below in the description box. If you're watching the YouTube video, which you guys should be watching the videos as well, you'll probably notice the background's a little bit different. And just the camera, I'm filming this just on my my iMac, which is kind of fun and a little bit of a change of pace, but it's great. So um, our merch is out. You probably saw the promo video if you are watching the YouTube. So you guys can shop that down below. And I'm just really excited about that because I just, I worked really hard on it. So I hope you guys just enjoy it as much as I do. For today's episode, um, this one was just kind of a fun one. It was a little bit random. His name is Young Pueblo and he reached out to me. His team reached out to me and I'd never heard of him before. He is an, is an author, a writer, a um, meditator, and he's just really inspiring. And I looked at his Instagram page and just saw all the quotes and the things that he talked about. And I was like, oh, this is really interesting. I do want to pre preface though and let y'all know that we do have a difference in belief, which you guys will kind of hear throughout the episode. It's not even like a problem or it's not even like we argue or anything, but you will hear us kind of talk about faith a little bit and how we both kind of find healing and how we discuss things from kind of a Christian perspective versus someone that's not a believer. And so it was just kind of an interesting conversation. So I did want to just preface that, but I was really just inspired by who he is and his healing journey. And I think he has some really cool mindsets and beliefs and viewpoints that could be very interesting to y'all. And then in the, on the flip side, cause y'all know I'm a Christian. I kind of bring in my perspective from the Bible and me being a Christian as well. So it was just honestly a really cool conversation. And he was just really fun to talk to. And once we jumped off the podcast, he actually was like, wow, thank you so much. He's like, honestly, I was really like refreshed and inspired and enlightened by you. And not very many people say that, which is like, I mean, normally like, yeah, the guests are like, oh, thank you for having me on. But he literally was like, wow, that was like such a great episode. Like, thank you for having me on. Like, I feel really re refreshed and enlightened by you. And I was like, wow, thank you. That was so sweet. So Anyway, I think this episode's kind of cool. We talk about a lot of different stuff, a lot about coping mechanisms, being honest with yourself, healing from the past, talking about past addictions, because he shares his story about being addicted to alcohol and drugs growing up, and just mindsets and things we can do now just to be healthier overall. So I really enjoyed this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. If you are enjoying this podcast, leave us a comment, follow us on Instagram, and leave me a review on my Apple uh, Apple podcast reviews or even Spotify, anything works. Anyway, thank you guys for listening. Let's just get right into today's episode with Young Pueblo. All right, welcome to Having Healthy Diego, or should I say Young Pueblo. <laughs> How are you today? I'm doing really well. I'm really happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Oh my gosh, it's my pleasure. Um, your team reached out to me and I looked at your stuff and I was just really inspired and you are wildly successful. You've written multiple books. You are a meditator, a writer, a speaker, and you have 2.2 million followers on Instagram. So round of applause for that. That's really hard to do. <laughs> Thank you. So you go by two different names. Can you explain that to us? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I have the the name that my parents gave me, Diego Perez. And then uh, when I started writing online, I decided to use a pen name uh, called Young Pueblo. And Young Pueblo is basically sort of signifies uh, what I felt really strongly when I started meditating was that humanity as a whole is very young and that we have a lot of maturing to do. So, okay, so for my audience that, you know, doesn't know who you are, because you were uh, new to me as well, and mm -hmm. now I'm following you because I think you're awesome. Um, can you kind of just share, like, from your perspective of, like, who you are, why is what you do, like, why are you passionate about what you do? And, yeah, just kind of, like, how did you get to this journey of being this, this awesome person online? Um, sure. So I, I think it all started really uh, back when I was in college. Um, I was having a really rough time. 
And I hadn't realized I was pretty unconsciously being motivated by my sadness, my insecurity and my anxiety. Um, and it actually led into me developing some really uh, bad habits, um, a lot of drinking, doing a lot of different drugs, partying constantly, um, always really sort of seeking pleasure, just seeking like another like burst of fun, you know, whether it's like yeah. constantly hanging out with friends, constantly going out. Um, and I just got so unhealthy and unhappy, which is the reverse of this. <laughs> Exactly. Um, so I sort of hit rock bottom in the summer of 2011 where I almost lost my life. Like I was, um, you know, it was another night of partying wow. and just did a bunch of different drugs and I felt like I was having a heart attack. When I was in that moment, I realized that I was just like in a place that I did not want to be in. Like I didn't want to be doing this anymore. I was exhausted by it. I wanted to kind of reconnect with the part of me that um, wanted to like help people and just like do right by this opportunity that my parents gave me because we emigrated from Ecuador um, oh, and wow. I came to the United States when I was about four years old. But I felt like I was sort of like just squandering my life. And slowly by being like really honest with myself and really like just um, no longer running away from what I felt because I think that was like one of the major, major points of the problems that I developed was that as soon as I felt any sort of mental turbulence or anguish inside of myself, I would just try to you know, run into the arms of some intoxicant and, you know, mm. fill myself up with another type of sensation so I wouldn't have to feel any of that heaviness inside of me. Um, so instead of that for about a year, like whenever I wouldn't feel good, I would just like practice being with it. And this is before I even learned how to meditate. Um, and I just started telling myself the truth as well because I was just constantly lying to myself. And then in 2012, I started meditating. I did my first silent 10 day course. Um, and after I had done a few of those, I felt like this like new creativity was coming up in a way where it hadn't before. Um, and I felt like I should start writing and I wanted, I was really inspired that healing was even possible because I was pretty shocked by the fact that healing was, this was like, you know, 2012, this was before like self-love even really became popular the right. way it is now in, in social media or even wellness as a whole wasn't really that big. So the idea of like healing yourself, just like, I didn't know that that was even a possibility. It shocked me and I knew, you know, I still have like a lot of healing to go and I still have a lot of, you know, a lot to learn and a lot to let go of, but I wanted to start writing and just sort of share a little bit of my journey. Um, and so, and I took to Instagram and over time it picked up and became popular. Wow, hey, congrats to you for overcoming that, becoming successful and finding what it means to be happy and healthy. That's like, I don't know, hearing your story is really inspiring because it shows people that are going through that right now, whether they're an immigrant, whether they're in the lowest point of their lives, um, whether they're in the midst of the partying and stuff right now. Cause I mean, I experienced that and I have constantly people reach out to me still to this day of like, I don't know how to overcome this. Like I'm still struggling. I'm still in the partying phase. Like I know you overcame it, but like, how do I, and we'll kind of get into that. Um, and that's just like, that's insane. So I, I feel like within that journey of you kind of being like, okay, enough is enough. Like what kind of really was either the best piece of advice you got or what was really the thing that really kind of helped you finally overcome it? Was it gradual steps? Was it just like an overnight shift? Or like what really helped you become free from all these addictions that you had? It was the like a very like slow and steady process. I remember how it was just, it was painful coming out of it because I had for such a long time built these habit patterns that I did not like, but I was comfortable with because that's what I knew. So having right. to tell myself the truth constantly, having to sort of force myself to sit with the uncomfortable emotions, like I did that for a whole year. And in the midst of that, you know, I started like, just like giving myself more nutritious foods, like going for a long walk, started going to the gym and just started really taking care of my body and my mind. And, um, and it hurt, like it was really just um, wow. contrary to everything that my mind was craving for. Like I was craving like, you know, that old type of fun and pleasure as opposed to like the hard work of like healing yourself. Um, and when I started meditating, um, I almost felt like that, that year of coming out of that was preparation for me to like, uh, just be ready to do this like serious deeper work of um getting to know my mind and like 
really starting to like eradicate those habit patterns at the root level uh, when I started practicing Vipassana. That's really cool because I do feel like a lot of times you'll see people's stories and they'll be like, overnight, it was just taken from Yeah, me. one month to the next. Yeah. yeah, and for some people, that's just not their journey. I know for me, that wasn't my journey. I've de I definitely had like very definitive moments throughout my journey, but it wasn't necessarily this like overnight success. And I think you kind of give people some hope of like, it's going to take some time. And also just remembering that it is painful at some times. It's really, really, really hard. And I love that you just said like, you need to be honest with yourself because that's the problem when like no one really, when you're healing, you don't want to be honest with yourself. It's like, we're all believing these lies. And I don't know. So I guess like, what were the things that when you were like, I need to be honest with myself, what were the things you were either running from or what are the things you started telling yourself to kind of heal more? One thing that became really clear when I started telling myself the truth was that I was two things. Like one was that I had become pretty selfish, um, was that I was just like become, you know, I was so focused on my own fun, my own pleasure that I did not realize how a lot of my friendships, uh, my relationship with my girlfriend, who's now my wife, my relationship with my parents, like all those relationships have become really superficial um, and were just pretty surface level because I was so disconnected and so far away from myself because if I wasn't able to honor my truth with myself, there's no way that I would be able to love all of them well. Um, so that was a really kind of painful truth to realize was that because I, all I could focus on was like, when's the next party? When am I going to go out? When am I, you know, what am I going to do next? Yeah. Um, and it's, and all of those, it's just I, 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 you know, I was not thinking about the other people around me that love me and, you know, I should be trying to deepen my connection with, but, um, that became really clear was that, you know, I was way too hyper-focused on, um, uh, my cravings. And because of that, I had kind of like let my relationships just fall to the wayside in a bad way. That's really powerful. I, I feel like I actually talk about that a lot of the times on this podcast, just how, even though. I do want people to love themselves and I do want to promote self-love and I want people to be confident. And there are times when you do need to be selfish, but that's also the flip side of the coin where that's like toxic selfishness, where it's all about you and all your problems are about you. And I just feel like sometimes we need to look outwards and by looking outwards, we're able to be healed more because we're also thinking about, I think healing other people also heals you and I've noticed that in my life was that's why I feel so fulfilled in my life is because I want to be the best version of myself for other people. So if I'm going to be on here preaching these things and helping other people, it's like I also that in, invertly also helps me myself grow. And so I think that's just really cool. Al along your journey, did you kind of have people walking alongside you? Did you have a mentor? Did you have a counselor? Or were you really just struggling alone? Or like, who was walking with you through this journey of finding healing? Um, oh, that's a great question. I think I, I want to circle back to that because I want to jump into, I wanted to add on to, to what you were saying about the self-love aspect because it's so important. Yeah, go ahead. There's go ahead. like a There's like a subtlety there too where like self-love isn't necessarily like fulfilling your cravings, right? Like self-love sometimes is doing the hard stuff that you need to do to build a better life. And I feel like for, for me, like, you know, self-love actually like treating myself well and doing what I need to do to like really heal my mind um, actually helped me just show up for other people and other, you know, in much deeper and better ways. Yeah. And I think without that, um, like my relationships would have always remained sh shallow. I like in a right. real way, I feel like self-love opens the door to unconditional love for all beings and trying to love right. other people better. So like, if you don't have it right within yourself, then it's gonna be quite a struggle. Whereas like what I was doing before that, you know, it was like contrary to self-love. Like it was just, you know, toxic. When I started my like journey, you know, um, I think my wife also started examining herself and I, we also ended up meeting a few friends, uh, my friends, Anwar and Lindsay in New York City, who they were also on a similar journey where they were just trying to get to know themselves a lot better. And it was pretty like, you know, like serendipitous, like and beautiful the way kind of we all, all ended up meeting at a very similar time and were in similar points in our lives. And we had this like slowing down moment, all of us together, where 
um, we like were trying to more so focus on ourselves and our, you know, like a lot of us were still like working and all that stuff, but it wasn't like, um, you know, we had these like major goals. We were more so trying to like see what's happening inside of ourselves and then, you know, like kind of reevaluate like how, what do I really want to put my energy into? Um, but yeah, there definitely were people that I, that I think like once I realized that I needed to make big changes in my life, it was just easier to connect with these other people who were trying to do the same thing too. Mm, that's such a good point. Yeah, I would, I totally agree with that. I'm just like, when you take a step back and you slow down and then you look at kind of your track record, you're like, what have I actually been doing? Like, what are the, what are the seeds I planted that are growing? Is it have good fruit? Does it have bad fruit? And you kind of take a little like audit of your life and your actions. And then when you see the bad fruit, you're like, oh crap, like something's got to be done here. Okay. So tell me about your book. You just wrote a book and it's called Lighter. Yes. Can you tell me kind of more about that? Like, why did you write the book and what would a reader get out of your book? Originally, I wrote two books called Inward and one called Clarity and Connection. And they're short books that are poetry and prose. Or, and they're the type of books that you can sort of open up and, you know, read a few pages and get something to reflect on as you move through your day. But I always wanted to write a book that was just like straightforward nonfiction um, and can you know, go deep into all these topics that I often write about. So in lighter, I talk a lot about self-love. I talk about emotional maturity. I talk about relationships. And I talk a lot about how this uh, sort of individual personal transformation actually affects the world and how really we live in this moment in human history where like healing itself is becoming more and more accessible in a way that it hasn't been accessible before. And there are so many millions of people in the world who are like actively healing themselves, whether it's like through therapy or meditation or even something like journaling, who are just like trying to put in that introspective work and tying that into the the fact that once people can love themselves better, they get more creative, they get more in touch with that raw, beautiful human nature that isn't really, you know, the human habit that we're accustomed to where like habitually like you know we're very fearful and um we only you know are tend to think about ourselves but we start developing that selflessness um that can actually help us build a much better world um so i try to tie all those things in together through lighter and the point of the book too is that you know from meditating i've really learned that enlightenment itself is really possible but it's a hard thing you know you're talking about like jesus and the buddha um like really high levels of human development which is possible, but it's very, very hard for like us regular human beings. Um, so it's instead of that, you know, what's much more doable is becoming lighter, is like letting go of those heavy mental burdens or whatever heaviness from the past that we tend to carry into the present. If we let those things go very intentionally, then we can, you know, have much lighter minds and live better lives. Today's episode is partially sponsored by Function of Beauty. So the key to consistent good hair days, I know what it is, y'all. It's using ingredients that will actually benefit your hair, which is hard to find, I feel like. So Function of Beauty is the world's first fully customizable hair care that creates individually filled shampoos, conditioners, styling, and treatment formulas based on your hair now and also where you want your hair to be down the road. So they are founded by a dream team of engineers and cosmetic scientists that are working together to help you. So each function of beauty product is individually designed to be as unique as you are and to cater to whatever specific hair needs that you need. So what you can do is you're going to go to the functionofbeauty.com website. You're going to first take a quiz for your hair to build your hair profile and select five hair goals, like whether you wanted more volume or frizz control, length and oil control, whatever you need, you just click that button. Then you can choose your color, your fragrance. There's so many different cute little colors on there you guys can choose, or you don't even have to have color if you don't want. You can get rid of fragrances, you can get rid of dyes, anything that you want. Then you're gonna get your freshly filled formula delivered straight to your door, and boom, baby, you are gonna have some nice hair on your way. If you guys wanna check this out, you got to say goodbye to generic hair care for good today. Go to functionofbeauty.com slash healthy to take your hair goals quiz and you'll save 25% off your first order. So again, functionofbeauty.com 
Go to functionofbeauty.com slash healthy to let them know you heard about them through me and to get 25% off your first order. That's functionofbeauty.com slash healthy to take your hair quiz and save 25% on your first order. You guys are going to love it. Check it out. It'll be in the show notes and enjoy today's episode. Part of today's episode is sponsored by BetterHelp, and I have worked with them in the past, and it's been so great, and because I started working with them, I decided to sign up with BetterHelp myself, so you're probably wondering, well, what is BetterHelp? BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't even have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to, which sometimes I really, really enjoy, but I know life can be overwhelming. Many people are super burned out without even knowing it. Symptoms can include lack of motivation, feeling helpless or trapped, detached, fatigued, and more. I know for me, just feeling overwhelmed feels like I'm just in this hamster wheel. And even though I know I need to do stuff, I just simply cannot motivate myself. There's nothing I can do to pull myself out of the slump. And that's really where, you know, professional therapy can be so beneficial and just help us out so we can process with someone and talk to someone to help them figure out what is causing the actual stress in our lives. We often associate burnout with work, but sometimes it's more than that, you know? So I've been starting to use BetterHelp. It's been really great. I had my first session about two weeks ago and looking forward to the next. And you know what? It's very raw and I cried a little bit, but it's great. You know, that is how we heal. So I really recommend it. And it's also much more affordable than in-person therapy. So you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. So just so you guys know, if you want to try this out, my happy and healthy listeners get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash healthy. That is betterhelp, better H-E-L-P.com slash healthy. Check it out, y'all. Mm, that's beautiful. I, lo- I love the premise of your book so much. Um, yeah, I'm actually, so I'm actually a Christian. I don't know if you knew that before coming on, but yeah, that's, I found a lot of healing in my walk, um, with multiple things, but I would say the number one thing was, was Jesus. And so even though I do feel like it can feel out of reach, the the beautiful thing about Jesus is he's accessible to everyone. And it's been a massive, massive part of my journey and like my entire podcast. Um, so yeah, do you, do you have like a faith or where do you kind of stand with like, faith in this part in part of this journey i love that you brought this up um so i grew up catholic and um definitely felt like i had a relationship with jesus and these days i've been focusing a lot on trying to understand the teachings of the buddha um and but not in a way like i don't consider myself a buddhist i just really try to you know meditate the way the buddha taught and uh and learn what he was writing about because i think there's a lot of commonalities there especially with like reaching those like that apex of unconditional love. Like, you know, whereas like Jesus was this being of like total unconditional love. I think for us to get there, it's very difficult, but there are, we can develop moments of unconditional love. We can develop more and more of them, or we can like see through that lens of selflessness and compassion. Um, So to me, I think it's like, it's important to like have those figures in our lives and also recognize that like, it's not just about praying to them, but trying to like emulate those habits that they had and developing right. them and like walking that path and like absolutely do you feel like um on the journey because again like i think you said that it's something to try to obtain unconditional love i don't think it's possible for a human to ever fully do that because we aren't we aren't jesus but i do think you're absolutely right it's the goal is to emulate that and try to do that but on this journey like did you ever kind of like relapse or when you did relapse, did you give yourself grace or like, how did you handle that when you did relapse? Because a lot of people on their journey, you know, they do fall back. They do fall back into the sin or the struggle or whatever originally enslaved them. How did you kind of go through that with like, did you give yourself grace? Did you talk to someone? Like, how did you overcome the relapse? Ah, that's a great question. I, there was a point where, so I never really went back to like really hard drugs. Um, once I really put my foot down, but I did reach a point like in 20, 15 where I was still like you know lightly drinking and smoking weed um and I realized that like I just didn't want to do this anymore like it was I could feel the way it was weighing down my mind and this was you know totally like a personal decision um Mm -hmm. I knew that it wasn't it wasn't helping me anymore um so there was a moment where I was able to stop for like a number of months and then I kind of like took a big step backwards because it just sort of like it felt too early and I was building too much tension around the topic. 
Um, and when I did go backwards, like I felt pretty upset with myself because I was like, man, I was like, I know that fundamentally, like in my heart, like I don't want to be doing these things anymore. And I'm sort of like just getting swallowed up by the culture and like the people around me and all of that. Um, so we, what I ended up doing was that I felt so much tension in me, but instead I realized that the answer was just acceptance. Like, you know, it wasn't like I had a big problem with weed or if I had a big problem with drinking, it was just like, I was done with it. And I needed to just accept the fact that I was having this moment where I was like doing it again, but then let me just accept deeply where I'm at so I can actually move forward. And it was funny because when I was able to accept it, um, something in me just like, like a flick of a switch, it was like, oh, like you're actually done with this now. And you needed this moment of acceptance wow. to actually move forward. You keep mentioning this word, like you had, you had tension, you had tension within your mind. It was like a wrestling probably inside of you. Um, there is a quote here from your book, or it just says that, you know, you will, you will help people finally stop feeling overburdened with the tension and be able to reconnect with the present. Can you kind of explain that more? Like, what is the tension and then how do you practically help people with that? There is this tension which either happens consciously or unconsciously every time that we are reacting to what we're feeling. Um, so like, in the, you know, the body's feeling so many different sensations and whether we uh, want to crave that sensation because it's something pleasant or whether, whether we want to get rid of it, um, there's this like serious reaction that's happening and when and that reaction often looks like uh us either like rejecting the fact that reality is impermanent like things are constantly changing or there's just something that we want to control but we can't um so trying to literally you know change reality manipulate it into something else and rather than accepting it as it is um i think that itself creates a lot of tension um so being aware of that process and realizing that a lot of our sort of mental pain comes from our reactions, I think um, can actually help lessen that a lot. Wow, I like that. Yeah, I think a lot of it is is uh, self-acceptance and just kind of being self-aware. Because I, I don't know, even just within dating, um, I just see all these TikToks of people being like, you know, don't, don't date someone that's not self-aware. And I do think it's really important if someone that's emotionally intelligent, emotionally healthy, someone that is able to really, the word I would, I always hear within counseling is self parent a lot of the times of being able to parent yourself with the wounds that your parents couldn't tend to, or the wounds that your parents actually created. And it kind of sounds like that's what you're saying is just consistently having to speak to yourself again and like take the thoughts captive and kind of just be honest with yourself, which is not what we want to do often. <laughs> um, so I don't know any thoughts on that. Yeah, I think it's, and like adding on to what you're saying, right? I think it's like letting yourself live with part of your attention facing inward. Um, because a lot of our attention is just like totally externalized often where we are just paying attention to our job and what's happening outside of us and the TV shows that we're watching and, you know, the social media platforms that we're interacting with. But we're not taking time to really ask ourselves, like, how am I feeling? What's happening in this moment? Or especially when like, you know, a difficult moment happens and there's like some sort of like argument or something that occurs and just checking in with yourself and like being like, how am I feeling right now? What can I do like um, to sort of act skillfully in this moment as opposed to making it harder for myself than it needs to be? Mm, yeah, that's really good. I think you you mentioned um, al along your healing journey that you were trying to kind of avoid just coping um, and there's a lot of people coping a lot, like everyone's coping in some shape or form, whether that's food, TVs, music, whatever. I just, I think it's something that's kind of inevitable, but I do think that there's larger mechanisms of coping that are more unhealthy and visible than others. So I guess what would be your advice or like, what would you say to people that they are struggling right now? And they're like, I just want to cope or they don't even know they're coping. Like, how do we avoid coping to actually in turn find freedom or healing? Yeah, and I love that point too, like that you're making it because it's it is coping and coping happens in different degrees and extremes. Um, so like, you know, I'm not saying like don't watch TV and don't go out with your friends, like have fun, like enjoy your life. But if you notice that you're solely pursuing pleasure and like that's like the main point of your life and, and you're using that as a way to run away from yourself, then there's an issue there. 
right? Yeah. Um, but I think it's all about balance. It's about being able to, you know, yeah, you can go out and like, you know, do the things that you want to do um, and enjoy life, but also be able to balance that with spending time getting to know yourself. And I think like one of the major things that I recommend to people is like, find some avenue for you to develop an introspective practice like whether that it's whether it's like a simple form of meditation or you know going on some sort of retreat um or you know i don't know connecting with with the thing that you believe in like what you, even what you were mentioning before like your relationship with jesus christ yeah. like that's a really profound thing and it can be really helpful to people you know if you don't have something that helps you get to know yourself then it's going to be really easy to just sort of stumble through life. That's right. not what you want. You want to live a very intentional life. Yeah, I completely agree. I I talk about this all the time where if we aren't intentional, like you're saying, or being careful, then, you know, years and years and years go by and all of a sudden you're like, wait, what, yeah. what have I been doing? Like, yeah. I look at my past and nothing like fruitful came out of it or whatever. And so that's exactly like why I have this podcast is because I just like, I want people to use their time well and their money and their talents and just like who they were created to be. I'm like, there's such a purpose for you. And I know that a lot of people really struggle to find that. And it does take time for sure. But I do think that there's like steps we can do daily or start to do, even if it's a small thing that really help us like at least figure that out. And so um, I guess just like practically, because you did mention like finding ways to just be healthy overall. So my podcast name is Happy and Healthy. What are kind of just like daily habits that you have that bring overall like health to you? Um, the latest, I mean, I am, I meditate every day. I meditate two times a day. That's like the key sort of like component that keeps my mind and my body healthy. Um, outside of that, I'm trying to exercise like three to four times a week. But on top of that, the new thing that I'm really working on is just going out to walk because like mm. i don't want to just like you know be at my computer like writing and thinking yeah. about things i'm like you know like i'm a writer i'm always trying to like i don't know write and a lot of that is just me processing things in right. my mind but i don't want to be like you know jumping on the treadmill and then like going really fast without like taking time to like walk through nature and like yeah. look outside and enjoy the sunshine so these simple, that simple thing is like something I'm actively trying to cultivate. I love that you said that about the walks because I don't know how much you are on TikTok. Do you watch TikTok? People, sl people sleep on walking. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah, but it like, it like randomly picked up this past summer where everyone's like hot girl walks. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a thing now. And I'm like, yes, finally, because really there is so much power. And you know, same thing for me, like instead of me meditating necessarily in the morning like i'll meditate on scripture or i'll journal mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. i'll pray and yep. then i'll go on a walk and often what i do like just two days ago i just took my headphones out and i was like i just need to listen i need yep. to stop having just this be. music blaring yeah. in my ears because sometimes like we're just going 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 constantly input 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 and sometimes i'm just like we just need to stop yeah and so i just took my headphones out i walked i prayed i just thought again, I was like, this is really nice. And so just for people listening, I encourage go on a walk, you know, just take out your headphones for a second. And it's, I don't know where you live, where do you live? So I used to live in New York City. I lived there for seven years and oh, now wow. I live in Western Massachusetts, like in okay. the middle of the woods. Yeah. Are you, I mean, I don't know what the temperature is there. Is it pretty hot there in the summertime or no? It's warm now, yeah, for sure. Okay, okay, so for me in Dallas, Texas, it's been 105 degrees, so... Oh, it's too hot. <laughs> wa walks are not feasible as much anymore, but, yeah. you know, now I take those those hawker walks outside and just bring them on the treadmill, even though it's not the preferred yeah. method. Yeah. But I just think they're super important just to slow down and just, you know, have a, a healthy moment to just kind of be like, okay, let me reflect on the day. And so I love that you, that you talked about that. Hey, I got to say, too, like, you hit it on the dot. Like, just, like, it resonated with me so much about and not constantly having that input, yeah. you know, because I catch myself on the same thing where I'm like, I love to learn, but like, am I taking it too far sometimes where I'm like constantly listening to podcasts, yeah. constantly listening to books. And I'm like, dude, just chill, just like go for a walk, look at the trees, like yeah. relax, you know, like be able to sit. And that's something where it's a habit that I constantly need to feed for it to actually calmly be a part of my life. And there's this writer, Jiddu Krishnamurti, who was, you know, really famous in the 70s and, and, and 80s. And 
he would talk about like, you know, can you actually look at something without imposing any of yourself on it? Can you just Mm -hmm. like look at the tree and just watch it without like putting some narrative on it or anything like that? And I think like I try to bring that sort of similar energy into the walking that I do, which is like, let me just observe. Let me just be as opposed to like trying to do something more. I completely agree. And I also think that can go hand in hand with um, taking social media breaks, like fasting yeah. from social media. I mean, I know for me, I could just be scrolling endlessly on TikTok yeah. or sometimes I just hit this breaking point and I'm like, enough is enough. And I just have to get rid of it. And that also can like when you talked about constantly wanting to grow, I'm the same way. I love yeah, it. Yeah. So, self-help books are my thing. I mean, if you could see my bookshelf up here, I have so many and i literally just ordered five new books this week because like i'm a psycho yeah but yeah. <laughs> i love to self-learn all the time but then also i do feel like there comes a point where yeah it's like there's all these ideas constantly flowing that sometimes you don't even know what are your own thoughts anymore things mm-hmm. become kind of confusing and you're like do i actually genuinely believe this or agree with it or am i just being kind of in some sense brainwashed because this person told me to think it and i'm thinking it and so i just think yeah having those rhythms of taking breaks and reflecting and for me personally like sometimes I just have to stop and be like okay what does God want to say to me versus this other author both are great but I think hearing God's voice is more important to me than hearing a writer's voice and so I think sometimes just finding those rhythms is super super healthy so I love that we I, about I that. I'm glad that you're mentioning that too because it's just like and it's funny because you see it happen like I've spent you know a lot of time on Instagram over the years and I see how these things come in waves. And I remember the mo- one of the most more recent waves was when all of a sudden everybody started talking about boundaries. Mm. Like everybody started, you know, and it's like, is that what we're really like? OK, like I, I definitely see the importance of boundaries, but like how much of this is me just adopting what I'm hearing other people right. say? And like, is this like genuinely something that I even need to add into my life or, you know, and, and boundaries are fantastic. Like, don't get me wrong, but I'm saying the concepts that come in in big waves, it's so easy to get swallowed up with them and just get sort of taken by them and and not do your own rather critical thinking about totally. it. That That's so funny that you said that. I literally just got the boundaries book in the mail today. <laughs> so I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, boundaries, what do you mean? No, uh, yeah, I just ordered that book today. They're important. I mean, I, yeah, like my, like my buddy Nadra, she's like, she's really amazing and is one of the experts around boundaries and it's super important but um it's funny because like even before that when everybody started talking about self-love at the same time which was like you know a cycle or two before that i think more like 2017 like everybody was talking about self-love at the same time and it's like funny how these things happen Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, completely where do you you find the balance of self-love versus giving back like what does that kind of look like for you in a, a weekly routine because kind of going back to what we were saying about self-love I feel like you know like we said everyone's like self-love self-love but I feel like if I were to genuinely follow the amount of self-love that I want to do I would be overweight I'd be lazy I'd be spending all my money I mean there's there's definitely like we were kind of saying like a toxic part of that self-love culture because if I just listen to everything that I want yeah I'm going to be blowing my money I'm going to be super lazy unmotivated all these things so yeah, what does it kind of look like for you to kind of give back? Like, I know you're a writer and that is giving back, but what does that look like in the daily for you? I'm, I'm glad that you're like bringing this up because it's like for me personally, right? Like I don't subscribe to ideas of self-love that are too commercial. Yeah. Like to me, like self-love is not like, it is important to treat yourself occasionally and give yourself these um, sort of like moments of joy, but you, you can also give them to yourself without buying things right um but i think the real part of self-love is and the way that i like to define it is doing what you need to do to heal yourself and doing what you need to do to free yourself like to me like that self-love it's doing the deep hard work of healing yourself um whereas like i you know you don't you can only do so much in terms of like you know to spend money on yourself in ways like that that i feel like can give you some different like fleeting types of pleasure, but it's not going to like fundamentally heal your mind. Um, So to me, you know, that's, that's one thing, the the way I try to separate it. And that's a lot of what I wrote about in the, that self-love chapter that I put in my book is like, 
you really want to try to understand that like self-love is about self-improvement and not just about filling all of your cravings. Right. Like self-improvement versus self-gratification. Yes. In a lot yeah. Of ways. That's a huge difference. Yeah. And I don't, I don't hear people talk about that very much. I didn't even think the podcast was going to go this direction, but, but it is like, it is so, so important. I think that's really what your goal is with your writing is understanding yourself and like really identifying the issues. Cause I always talk about in my podcast as well is you cannot heal what you won't reveal. And so if you don't reveal the issues or reveal, why am I hurting? Why am I coping? Where did this stem from? You're never going to actually fully be healed. And so you have to like reveal and dig and probe and go touch the painful wounds of your childhood or who hurt you. And it sounds like that's what you're saying to do as well. Um, and then you, once you go work through them, even though you said it was very painful, that's how in turn you find healing. Yeah. And then you come out the other end and you find that, that, um, sort of new capacity that you've developed because it takes a lot of energy and courage to be able to observe yourself with the utmost truth. Then you can sort of take that new, basically skill set that you've developed and bring that energy into your relationships. And you'll find that you can give to other people in a way that doesn't fully subtract from yourself because it's important to develop selflessness like selflessness and egolessness those are fantastic qualities yeah. that i think aren't talked about enough nowadays um but at the same time you need to balance that out without in a way where you're not exhausting yourself mm -hmm. right like you, there is a beautiful balance that you can strive between being egoless and also developing a healthy amount of self-love mm. Man, I completely agree. And that kind of goes back to boundaries in some sense, but... Totally, right? Boundaries yeah. <laughs> help. Yeah, because otherwise if you keep giving, 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 you have nothing left to give. You're exhausted and you're giving from an empty cup. And yeah, completely, completely agree with that. Um, okay, I have two more questions for you and then we're going to wrap up. So what are some daily mindsets that you have? Like what are things kind of when you start to feel, you know, sad or you're doubting yourself or whatever, like what are kind of just some mindsets that you have? Yeah, the, the biggest, biggest one, um, and someone asked me this a few, this was before the pandemic when um, I think I was at a book event and someone asked me like, can you summarize in one word what you're trying to learn in your life? And I was like, impermanence. Impermanence is everything, change. Wow. Um, and I really feel that a lot of the sort of tension and hurt that we feel in our mind is due to our rejection of impermanence like we reject change like the moment that we find something that we really like and crave we want to keep it the same forever like this is my family these are my friends we're always going to look like this none of us are ever going to get unhealthy like you know we're all we're, like i want to keep this the same forever and the moment that it does change it hurts because we're wow. so attached to keeping things in this one state which is literally moving in contrast to nature because nature is just movement it's constant change at the subatomic level at the physical level at the like astronomical level like everything is constantly changing um wow. so trying to embrace that truth like when i find myself struggling on a day-to-day -day basis or you know whenever sort of struggle appears in my mind i try to remind myself that this is also changing like this is just wow. another like this this emotion this moment, this situation, it's just the movement of change itself. Wow. Honestly, thank you so much for saying that. I feel like I needed to hear that. I'm, I'm going through a season where a lot is changing, a lot's going to continue to change. And yeah, you're right. We get so attached to what what is and yeah. instead yeah. of what could be or what was or whatever, we're just like, no, and we cling. And I'm going to keep just, this. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, no, no one can have this. Is it going to change? I want this to stay mm -hmm. forever. But, you know, even just like biblically, like it, it's just we're not guaranteed anything. We're not entitled to anything. We're not promised anything necessarily. And so just trusting that, you know, regardless of the change, it's really hard. But change is so good for us sometimes and it's so necessary. And I know there's this author, Dr. Henry Cloud, he wrote a book about necessary endings. And that book talks about how like, yeah, it's painful, but it's necessary to grow you and shape you. And I just like feel like I needed that. Where I'm like, oh, I don't want anything to change right now. But it's also it's like for my betterment. And I also do believe that, you know, usually if things are taken away or things are changing or they're, you know, just not as they were, you know, something better is coming 
or there's something that we need to learn from it or that, you know, God wants to provide something else for us down the road, but we have to first let go of what we have now. And that was such a great, a great word. And you said impermanence. Impermanence. Yeah. I am going to write that one down. (laughs) Everything's impermanent. Everything's constantly changing. It's literally all fluctuations. And when we're able to embrace that and just like accept that truth of nature, um, life actually flows a lot more harmoniously and you, you cause yourself a lot less pain. Yeah, that's so true. And I just think too, the, the last final thing is that something that I kind of hold on to is holding everything loosely is your friendships, your, your dating relationships, you know, whatever you have is just holding things loosely because I think then we are, we, we give it freedom to kind of let it, let it do its thing. We're not clinging onto it, trying to control, manipulate and force. And people feel more free to be who they are. If you're holding them loosely with friendships, I always say to people like, hold them loosely. Like don't put these expectations on them because in the end you're going to be disappointed and they're going to feel like they owe you something and like they have to prove something to you. And it's exhausting for all of us all around. So I just think holding everything loosely is just a better way to think about life. (laughs) Hey, I thank you for that gift because I've never thought about that in that like small set of words, like holding them loosely. Um, Because I feel like part of that has been my life motto, especially with friends and especially like with my my best friend that I've I met when we were both in fourth grade. Um, Like, I think the reason why we've been able to remain friends for such a long time is exactly because of that, because like there's just like no expectations and like Mm -hmm. some years we'll constantly be together. Other years we will see each other very little. But like every time we get back together, it's like, a re- you know, it's like family. Like it just feels it just clicks, picks right back up. Yeah. But, it, but I think that what keeping that door open is because of that sort of loose holding that you were mentioning. I think absolutely. it makes it all easier. Yeah, absolutely. Those when I think about the healthiest friendships I have, they all have that dynamic. And so I love that you said that. Awesome. OK, the very, very last question I have for you is what makes you happy and healthy? could be anything. <laughs> um, I, it has to be a mixture of my own strong determination and the inspiration of my wife because she's like, especially when it comes to health, like she's the leader in the house. <laughs> and, and I'm sort of like following along like two steps behind trying to keep up with her. Um, but I think um, a lot of it is like, you know, me just being determined to keep taking steps forward on the path of freedom, on the path of healing and knowing that like i'll have to you know i can't always give myself the thing that i want um especially if like that is only going to bring short-term pleasure and in the long term is actually going to hurt me um so i have to be really mindful of like you know what am i feeding my mind what am i feeding my body um because like you know it's not just like what you're feeding your body like what what's the input that you're giving to your mind that could be taking you in a different direction um but yeah i think strong determination and the support of my wife Gosh, your wife sounds amazing. Dang. Yeah, she's she's better than me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what they say. They say marry someone that's better than you. So sounds yeah, like you got totally. that. Totally. <laughs> yeah. I love that. And I love that you even talked about what you input. There's just this quote that's like, what you input is what you output. So be careful what you input oh, nice. because that's what you output. I'm giving you some quotes for your Instagram right now. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm gonna have to credit you for sure. <laughs> Please do. I will gladly take it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No credit needed. Um, thank you so much for just being on my podcast and just giving us wisdom and some awesome things just to think through and think about. It's really cool to just see your healing journey and just show people that possibly are struggling or they're struggling to heal that it's very, very much possible. And you're living proof of that. I feel like I'm living proof of that as well. And so, um, thank you just so much for coming on the podcast. Yeah. Thank you too. This has been like just an amazing conversation. Super grateful that we got to connect. Yeah, me too. And please let me know or let my followers know where can they uh, follow you and also where can they buy your book? Yeah, so you can follow me on Instagram. Um, I write under the, under the name Young Pueblo. It's spelled Y-U-N-G underscore P-U-E-B-L-O. And my new book, Lighter, is coming out um, October 4th and you'll be able to find it in bookstores everywhere or online on Amazon and whatnot. Amazing. Congrats again on your book. I know that takes a lot of time to work on them. So congrats. (laughs) Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Um, God bless. And uh, I'm looking forward to keeping up with you on Instagram. Definitely. See you soon. All right. Bye. (laughs) 
So that was today's episode with Young Pueblo, a.k.a. Diego, and he's awesome. And I just really enjoyed that conversation with him. And it was just really refreshing. And I just loved how kind he was and also just respectful. And so let me know what you guys think on the Instagram or if you found this beneficial. Um, just so y'all know, like I, I love to interview also non-believers as well. I think it's interesting. I still think it's important and helpful at times. Um, but just for me personally, I'm always going to try to go back to the Bible, go back to truth, go back to just God and his wisdom in how he has helped me in my life. And I'm not saying that, you know, he couldn't still be healthy and whole or happy apart from Christ. I do think he could, but I also think that for me and for everyone in general, true happiness and satisfaction in life and eternity is found in Jesus. And so that's something throughout my podcast, I'm going to always reiterate But it was still really enjoyable talking to him, hearing his perspectives, and just having a good conversation just to kind of see how we both could process through things differently. So hopefully that's not taken wrong, but that is something that I really do want to kind of stand by in my podcast as I continue to go forward and everything of that sort. So um, thank you guys for listening. I, uh, yeah, maybe I'll just do some quick updates at the end of this podcast. But yeah, it's, it's July 14th. I just got back from LA and that was really great. I filmed an awesome episode on singleness there with some of my girlfriends, which that will be posted. I'm not exactly sure when that'll be up, but it was easily one of my most favorite episodes. It might already be up or you guys can check it out soon, but, um, just such a great episode. I filmed it with like three of my girlfriends out there and we're all single. We had all this advice for y'all. And so hopefully that's helpful. And I'm just back home, just trying to deal with the housing stuff. And then just as of today, I've been working on merch because merch is going to be going live tomorrow. And so it has just been a crazy, crazy, crazy day. And I'm going to this Charlotte Tilbury event tonight and I'm going to be vlogging. So make sure you guys are subscribed to my YouTube channel so you guys can check that out. Um, Yeah, it's been good. I just feel like I've been running 5,000 miles per hour, but I'm I'm trying not to complain. I'm not complaining because I feel blessed, but I also am like, oh my gosh, I need to catch my breath. But it's been good. Once I get the merch out and some other project projects I'm working on, I'll be able to breathe a little bit, uh, but it's all good. I feel really blessed. And so this podcast has been a blessing, truly, truly just two years of this podcast and the merch coming out and over 2 million streams and everything. It's just so crazy to me. I just, I'm like, how did I get here? Like, wow, I'm so grateful. Thank you, God. And thank you to you guys for checking it out every single Tuesday. So Yeah, those are my thoughts, and don't forget you guys can watch this on Spotify, YouTube, and listen to anywhere you can listen to podcasts. Again, the link to um, shop for the merch is just janineamapola.com. That's available in the description, and this has been a blessing. I love you all so much. I hope this episode blessed you all. If it did, let us know, and I will catch you guys again next Tuesday for another episode of Happy and Healthy. Until then, stay happy and healthy. Bye, guys. Bye.